Welcome to Bad Tabletop Gaming. Please like, share, and subscribe if you like the content that we're putting out. Right now, I'm Craig, and this is Andy, and we're here to talk to you about Hobby Talk, a small series that we're doing on top of our regular battle reports. We're going to be going over everything from choosing an army, building an army, choosing models for that army, painting, to finally playing a game against each other. So, Andy, what army did you choose? Uh, right now, I chose uh, the Word Bearers, mm -hmm. and... Uh... There's a couple guys out there up front that go war back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're just uh, kind of, well, they have a place in, in my heart, mm -hmm. but <laughs> not a good we, one. We will get into that. <laughs> we will get into that. Uh, myself, I've chosen the Death Guard. Uh, the Death Guard, again, I've been thinking about them for f a few years now, and I just kind of thought this was the time to pull the trigger. Now, both of us have other projects on top of what we're Many doing. Many other projects. <laughs> some more than others. Uh, Andy, I don't know, what are you? What are some of the projects you're working on on top of your... Uh, on top of the Word Bears, i still continuing on, on adding more units to my Ultramarine forces. Mm -hmm. uh, I also have uh, Imperial Fists. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're kind of starting as well. Uh, I do have some ideas for um, some fancy looking terrain in the future. Mm -hmm. So that'd be pretty cool too. Yeah. Um, and maybe uh, might even have some some uh, custodes to incorporate Ooh. with with the Imperial Fist. Okay, so, okay, I, I, you know, kind of get that Siege of Terra feeling. Yeah, exactly, more. exactly. So, <laughs> okay, and I, then there's also uh, the demons. Yes, know, the demons. Oh, the Ruin Storm. They'd be pretty neat to to yeah. try. But I bought some models, you know. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I've seen I've seen what you bought. And you were going and looking to look like Zinch? To Zinch, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, they've got a good place in here too. So mm. <laughs> I was actually thinking about once I'm done building up my Death Guard, I was actually going to start looking at doing um, Nurgle. Uh, just to, because my plan is eventually I'm going to start having like these guys, and I'll get into this transitioning. Like they won't just all be perfectly good Marines. Like I want to start, the vets might be. You know, the bloated guys. By the time they get there, they're already rotten. They're already rotten, right? So, okay, so let's uh, let's just dive in here. Um, we're going to talk about why we've chosen the armies we have, and I mean, kind of already gone over that. But I'm going to let you talk about why you've chosen the word bearers. Well, f first off, uh, like I said, play ultramarines. Um, mm -hmm. I like to have the other side of it. Mm -hmm. You know, the the grudge. The yeah, uh, yeah. The other army. Uh, um, battle of Kelf. Pretty much in Kelf. <laughs> yeah. Um, they, they've always been a kind of a hit or miss for me mm. and I just, I decided finally to incorporate them into my hobby, mm. uh, starting uh, some Gal Vorbach. Uh, I think it'd be really awesome to, um, do them up with the different darker reds mm, and yes. the black and the trimming and whatnot. Yeah. No. And, um, it's also neat with their, uh, Demonic kind of apertures and whatnot. Yeah, they were they were so, like the very first to start turning to chaos yeah. and being changed by the forces of chaos. Yeah, so. so, so yeah. So for me, I chose Death Guard again. Like I said, I've been thinking about them for a long time. I've always had a I want to say a special place in my heart for them. Uh, I've always liked the 40k Death Guard. I like how they're tough and they're resilient and like as much as they're infected by these diseases and pestilence. A simple bolter ain't going to take them down. That's nothing. Like it's, <laughs> it, it, it doesn't phase them. Um, I also really like a lot of their lore. Um, things like just the color scheme. I, myself, uh, I'm not a weathering kind of guy, so that's something I really want looking at focusing on really honing my weathering technique, getting yep. changing up how I paint and stuff like that. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to. That's basically why I'm going with the Death Guard. I mean, I have other armies. I have my Dark Angels, and I have my Thousand Sons. I have my Sons of Horus, and they all have their own reasons for why I've chosen them, some more than others. And I know I will be doing a Nurgling or Nurgle-style demon army in the future, and that's more for when we get into, like, Siege of Terra stuff. Yeah, I know, for sure. So, yeah. So, uh, here's a question. Why have you chosen your armies in the past? Now I know I know your armies. I know why you've chosen them, but does everybody else know why you've chosen them? Uh, so I've always been uh, an ultramarine fanboy for sure, hundred mm. percent. Since I was twenty years ago, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, yeah. They 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 have that 
Roman appeal to them. Mm. I've, I've always fancied that. I've always liked their look. I like their colors. Um, that even 40k wise, like there was always an appeal to them. Mm. To them. Yeah. So finally, and and funny enough, I mean, like I played them on and off, and I've tried other chapters and other yeah. legions and whatnot. But finally, in Horus Heresy is when I actually decided to fully go with them and incorporate them. Right. Mm. So. And uh, it's been it's been it's been quite the blast doing up the ultramarines. I uh, struggled with the blue, and then finally I found yeah, the blue you. that I really really liked. Oh, they're beautiful! Um, it has no, that old. If no one knows he did win best presenter at LVO <laughs> twenty nineteen. Wow. Sure, I, I did, but you know that's <laughs> they're a gorgeous good stuff, looking army. Let's just face the facts: you have a gorgeous looking ultramarine army. Thanks. Um, yeah, it's it's. The blues, the golds, the whites, the um, just the Romanesque, the crests. You know, mm. making making the fancy characters. Conversions are always fun. Yeah. Um, so they're pr pretty good. Um, I usually I, I used to play like more of like I guess Imperial Guard. Yeah. Back yeah. for forty k. Yeah. Um, but starting to pick up and play the Marines again is is definitely definitely been pretty fun. So. What about your other army? My other army. Your other army. We, I know it. Dude, they they don't know it. Oh. I know I know they're no longer with you. <laughs> they've yeah. Been, the, they've um, been around our community. So for for 30k Horse Heresy, I actually started playing with the world leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of there's kind of that trio, right? Yeah. The world leaders, the ultramarines, the word bearers. The word bearers, right? Yeah. They all kind of have that special thing for me. They're all involved. I just I love the stories. I love the inter, you know interaction between the the legions. I mean, Karn was one of my favorites. Mm. Right? And now you throw in the Primarchs and yeah, all three of them I, I really like. So mm. uh, for the Word Bearers, it's it's actually my first army like working with Red. Okay. So it'd be it'd be be entertaining. Blue was a challenge. <laughs> and uh, the white was a challenge. Oh, the white! Oh. <laughs> the, it, for, his world leaders became my world leaders yeah. for a while, and I gotta say, the white. Oh, the white! Though they look great, but the white was really was, difficult to work with. Is an adventure. It was an adventure, <laughs> and I know I'm going with the white army again, but this time I don't have to be uh, as off white. Yeah, I, I, I picked up a cream colored white. Um, slightly off. I've got some new techniques I'm going to be looking at later on. I'm going to be going over those in a later later part in the series. Uh, for me, I've I've my Dark Angels, my Thousand Sons, and my Sons of Horse. Now, the the first two, the Dark Angels and Thousand Sons, they've always held a special place in my heart. I mean, I started playing in third edition, and I started with Dark Angels, so they have a like they're in my heart. They're really deep in my heart. I, I believe <laughs> they're loyalists. I don't care what anybody says. But on top of that, I I just like the models. I like the lore. I like the fluff. I've been collecting um, 30K Dark Angels since 2011, so before my son was born. So I've been collecting for a while. So when those models dropped, oh, when I saw those yeah, models, pretty nice. they are great looking models. I mean, I have my own... I have a couple custom Praetors I've done over the years, but I love the way the new Dreadnoughts look, the Leviathan and the, the Contemptor, and the new Praetors are just, I'm getting them no matter what. Yeah, they, they definitely did them justice. They sure. definitely did, and they've had a lot of time to yeah. get it right. Thousand Suns, again, I have always liked the Thousand Suns. I remember when a yeah, white dwarf issue had the Thousand Suns rules, and I remember play testing them with a buddy of mine way back in third edition. They've always held a special place in my heart again, too. And with their red, I, it was that was a challenge. That that red was a challenge, and yeah, that crimson metallic red. That crimson metallic. I, I haven't taken that step yet to try that that Ooh. kind of style, but there's a it, few of us in the community, and Craig is one of them that have have nailed it down. And it's 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 not an easy technique, and it's. It's very easily messed up. Yeah, so, definitely. definitely. But yeah, in my sense of horse, um, they were underutilized in our community. I mean, I think one other person plays them. Yeah, I think about two, 
two other players. Two, yeah, yeah, two other players. Yes, two, two other players. players. Uh, at the at one point in time, we didn't even know one of them existed. That's true. And so, it turned out to have a oh, humongous army, a huge army, and it's beautifully painted. Like the, I can't, my stuff doesn't even touch how beautifully painted <laughs> this stuff is. But with that being said, I mean, I still the Sons of Horse. Um, those three, the first three books in the Black Library series, they, I just, they, oh, I just love the th- the Sons of Horus and and everything about them. And I really originally made them as a loyalist Sons of Horus. I was going to play a campaign through uh, Istvan three with a friend of ours, um, and unfortunately that hasn't panned out as much as I wanted it to. But the Sons of Horus went from being like, oh, I'm only going to do about twenty five hundred points to. I've got six, seven thousand points, and I keep changing and expanding, and and n- trying new things and trying new ways to play. Yeah, it went pretty crazy on that one. I did. <laughs> I mean, my it's my good. It's my good. thousand suns are in the three thousand mark. My dark angels, we don't even want to discuss. They're up at either over ten thousand. I don't have any special units yet for them. So I've been, like I said, I've been collecting them for a while, and my sons of Horus are sitting at that seventy five hundred point mark, maybe a little less, but somewhere in that range. I mean, I like big armies. What can I say? Um, so that's why the reason, some of the reasons why we chose armies in the past. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to be discussing in our in our in the series everything that goes along with choosing an army. Like, let's like, how do you go about choosing an army for um, yourself? Usually, for me, it's it's really it's kind of what I'm into right at that moment, right? Like. Mm. Uh, sometimes it's just a color scheme, or I see somebody else's uh, way that they've they've done that army, mm. but I think, oh, that's so awesome! I want to do that. Yeah, you know, no. um, just uh, even the units that they come out with, like like uh, not so much rule wise, but just the way model they wise. Yeah, right? like for me, I'm not. I'm usually for me, it's I pick an army because I I really like the look of it, and then I go mm. later on and, and and look at the rules, right? Like, yeah. Um, you know, and then, and some some units aren't that great, but no. other units are are fun to play with, and just the modeling, the ideas that go ahead in my head, like just in my brains, just I have ideas for for all the scripture and stuff mm-hmm. like on the armor and whatnot, yeah. which I think is pretty awesome, and some darker shadowing and tones, and it also lets me experiment with like different the different colors and different hues, yeah, and whatnot, and um, it's also depending on what army I was previously playing. Um, like my Ultramarines is a very uh, shooty army, mm. and I can see the War Bears being a close combat yeah. army with buffs. Yeah, right. So very close in your face. Exactly. Similar, but not the same as the World Eaters. Yeah. So, and it's it, like again, it's like I said, it's a lot of the models, the look of the army, the color of the armies. Mm. Um, even the even like the Primarchs, the way they look. I know, I know not everybody likes Logar. Mm-hmm. I know Erebus is you know oh, he's, he's not uh, the favorite of everybody. No, <laughs> no, he's not. But um, I enjoy them. Like I, I, I like that. There's you know Erebus is so sinister and whatnot mm-hmm. right from the story. So oh yeah, it's like okay, I'm gonna make this guy look really dark and like sinister and you know the pale really? face with the you know work so, on his yeah, face right? sunken like exactly. lines and so almost uh, center Palpatine ish. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that's usually for me. It's 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 about the look of the army first. Uh, what really uh, intrigues me on it before I end up even really looking at the rules, right? Mm-hmm. So, how about you, Craig? What about you? Uh, for me, um, there's a lot of things. Uh, I start off by seeing something or getting an idea in my head similar to yourself, and then I'll dive into the rules. I will, into the books, I go into 1D4chan, uh, I'll start going on Facebook pages. I'm on several of the Facebook pages because I'll get an idea. I'm like, oh, what about this? You know, I, Night Lords. Um, for this one, the Death Guard, because I've been thinking about it for so long, it was a little easier to pull the trigger on this. Plus, I was terrified of the painting the lightning on, <laughs> on, on, the, on the Night Lords. Painting, like, I, I go onto Facebook pages, I look up uh, stuff on Google, uh, Google Images, just to get an idea of what people are doing out there. Um, I wanted to try a new technique, like I said, uh, chipping. 
and weathering is not my forte. My stuff is usually very crisp, very clean, fresh off the factory floor kind of look, whereas the Death Guard are not that at all. So it's taking me out of my comfort zone and bringing me into trying new painting techniques that I can use later on on different things, whether it be train, new armies, uh -huh. or whatever. But it's taking me out of my comfort zone into something, into new territory. Plus, I mean, the Death Guard and the Awesome Army, and they are underrepresented in our community. There's one other player that I know of that plays Death Guard. I know there's a lot of Death Guard players out there, but in our community, I'd be number two. So I'm really looking forward to playing these guys, and I'm really going to be focusing on their fluffish style, a fluffish style list with, you know, heavy weapons. I feel like they can still be competitive while still sticking to their fluff. And that's the nice thing with Horus Heresy, right? Like, we know not everybody, uh, you know, plays either at competitive level yeah. or not, or just just for fun, like it's mm. supposed to be, right? Um, the nice thing is you can go in there and pretty much play whatever you want to play. Yeah. And you, know, you talk with your opponent and set up a fun match, fluffy mm. match, or... If you're one of those guys who likes to play that challenging, you know, yeah, yeah, there's lots of us like that, right? Yeah, there's, a, I there's mean, also lots of us that enjoy just hey, let's try this out and let's let's build around it and have a battle, you know, yeah, like, and that's the awesome part about it, yeah, um, yeah, no. I mean, there's so many different reasons why a person chooses an army, and really what it comes down to is what you're going to like, what you're going to enjoy painting. Mm -hmm what you're gonna enjoy playing. And now don't be afraid that you're gonna, you may choose the army, an army and think this is gonna be the army for me. It may not necessarily be the army for you. That doesn't mean it's not a good army. It doesn't mean it's uh, worthless. It just means it's not suited for you and your style of play. So play around, test games out. I really recommend play testing armies, you know, just with your friends, just try different things, see if they're okay with that, play test things. Find out what works for you, and at the same time, not even just so much, is it a good army or a bad army? Does it win or does it lose? Is it what you're looking for? Painting, uh, fluff, lore, the and whole works. It. Yeah. You know, and you got, it's your army, you're gonna, you gotta be the one who enjoys yeah, it. So, for sure. I mean, Death Guard, are they a top tier army? I, they, everybody says they're not. That doesn't mean I need to, I can't, shouldn't play them because they're not top tier. I love everything about them, the color scheme, their lore, their fluff, their style of play. And it's it's just it's something that I'm really looking forward to really looking forward to yeah. doing and, and coming out of my comfort zone on many facets of this, this game, whether it be the the painting or just about anything really. The the painting, the chipping, the weathering, the style of play. I'm usually a much more in your face style of play where this is a stand back, sit back overwhelming firepower kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, we're kind of going in our opposite direction. We are. Right? So we are. It'll be interesting to see what, what goes about. Like my sons of Horus my thousands, and my thousand sons and even my dark angels are very good in close combat or close quarters whereas these guys, they are good in close quarters but they're so much better with their overwhelming firepower in the back lines standing back, firing they brought more, we they brought more heavy weapons than you did. It's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> Um, so we also have a few other things we're doing on our page. Uh, we are on the first and fifteenth of the month. We want you guys to share your fully painted armies or fully painted models. We want to see them, and we're going to feature one of yours, one of your guys' models or armies on our one of our battle reports as a feature. You know, we're going to talk about it, show show a few pictures of it, and just get you, get noticed, get you guys noticed out there too, right? Yeah. No, for sure. So yeah, that's on the 1st and the 15th, starting on June 1st. Is there anything you want to talk about? Anything you want to add? I don't know. I think, uh, I think we pretty much... You think we covered it. this for Just part always one? always remember to go out there and have fun. Yeah, go out there and have fun. Now, part two is going to be... We're going to be talking about building lists, choosing models, why we choose lists, choose models, stuff like that. And this is going to be an ongoing series. We're looking at about five, six parts all culminating with a, a full battle report between myself and you. Yep. Um, it's not going to be 2,500 points, but it is going to be above 1,250. I think we're, what, we talk about 1,500? 15, 1,500? 15, yeah, 15, around, 15, yeah. around 1,500 points. I will be expanding it up to 2,500, my yeah, force. I'm same. sure you will be doing the same. But this just is going to get you an idea of 
everything you're going to need to do to get into this hobby and an idea of how we go about our hobby, how we do our own hobbying. So with that all being said, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit that notification button so you always get updates when we drop a new video.